Where can you find matter in an ecosystem? You can find it in living things, also known as biotic factors, such as plants and animals. You can find it in abiotic factors, such as air, water, and soil. Often, you'll find this matter moving from factor to factor. Let's look at how matter moves within the system. Huge plants can grow from tiny seeds. Where does all that matter come from? Plants get most of their matter from the air. Green plants use carbon from the air to make their food. This carbon becomes part of their stems, roots, and leaves. Plants get a smaller amount of their matter from water and a very small amount from soil. Look, something's eating those plants. Plant matter is entering the animal's mouth and moving to its stomach. The matter will be broken down and will become part of the animal's body. Plant matter becomes animal matter. Animal matter can be transferred to other animals. Watch this gazelle escape a cheetah. If it doesn't run fast enough, the gazelle will be prey for the cheetah. The gazelle's matter would be transferred to the cheetah's body. Animal matter moves into the soil when animals produce waste or when dead plant or animal matter breaks down. But it might not stay there for long. Matter can move back into biotic factors like these earthworms, and then into this bird, and so on. How does matter travel in a water habitat? One ocean food chain starts with a kind of algae called kelp. Like plants, algae produce their own food. That means they get matter from abiotic factors such as air and water. Matter from kelp moves into hungry sea urchins and other shellfish. Predators such as sea otters eat the shellfish. Matter from waste and dead organisms move back into abiotic factors, water, and the soil underneath it. What kinds of matter can become part of your body? Humans can take in matter from plants and animals. Humans are able to collect a lot of matter from a habitat. Collecting too much matter can put an ecosystem out of balance. For example, humans share food from the sea with sea animals like these seals. Overfishing or taking too many fish can hurt the whole ecosystem. People can fish responsibly by throwing back fish that are too small and avoiding fish species with low populations. Limiting the matter we take from an environment keeps the matter moving, and that helps to keep the environment in balance. They creep, they crawl, they live everywhere, and on everyone. They're one of the most important parts of the food chain, and yet many are too small to see. They are the decomposers. When a leaf falls off a tree, or a plant or animal dies, decomposers break them down. This is important for two reasons. First, Decomposers clean up dead plant and animal material. Without decomposers, dead leaves and other material would pile up year after year. Second, breaking down dead material frees up stored nutrients. The nutrients go back into the soil and are taken up by new plants. If you've ever seen an earthworm or a mushroom, then you've seen a decomposer. There are also many decomposers you haven't seen because they're too small. Microscopic bacteria are some of the most important decomposers on Earth. Don't look now, but you have microscopic decomposers working on and in your body right now. Scientists estimate that the average human has trillions of bacteria inside his or her digestive system. Most of these are good bacteria that help break down food. They also help your body with other tasks, like making vitamins and keeping out bad bacteria that can make you sick. Millions of types of bacteria on Earth break down many different foods, 
bacteria can break down food that's left too long in your kitchen. One type of bacteria can feed on crude oil, the kind of oil used to make gasoline. These oil eaters are used to help clean up oil spills in the ocean. Mushrooms, mildew, and mold are also decomposers. These are all a type of organism called fungi. Although fungi are not plants, they make their own food by breaking down dead plant and animal material. Dead material is their food. Just add air and water and they get to work. Fungi range from microscopic to huge. Different types feed on different materials, from fruits and vegetables, to tree trunks, to plants and animals. If you've ever seen a garden, you've seen the work of one famous decomposer, the earthworm. Worms feed on partially broken down plant and animal material in the soil. They finish the decomposing job and make more nutrients available for plants. As good as an earthworm is at decomposing plants and animals, a redworm is even better. Redworms are also known as composting worms, manure worms, or red wigglers. These five inch long worms can eat three times their weight in a week. Some insects work as decomposers. Dung beetles eat and live in animal waste, also known as dung. Some dung beetles roll small pieces of dung into large balls, which they bury for snacking on later. When the beetles eat the dung, they break it down and release nutrient-filled waste into the soil. Whether it's a vegetable garden or a piece of moldy bread, you can find signs of decomposers at work. Remember that they're doing important work, keeping nutrients cycling through the food chain.